Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It really just shows the will to live is, is something that you need to account for in every search and rescue case. Morning on GMSA, the Coast Guard is calling the rescue of a cruise ship passenger a Thanksgiving miracle. How it all unfolded, that's coming up. And taking a live look at City Cam, the morning is starting off wet after a lot of rain overnight. Sarah's got the forecast and what the rest of your week weekend could look like. Good morning. It's November 26th. Happy Saturday. An Good honor morning. to have Alicia with us this morning. Filling in for Max. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Of course. And I, oh, so you said you got eight hours of sleep last I night. I did. I did. I don't play when it comes did to Did you, sleep. did the rain wake you up? Because I woke up to like kind of a little bit of a thunderstorm. Oh, no, this morning though, I could hear the, the pitter patter. The little yeah. pitter patter. And you're like, I, I was able to, sleep. yeah, I didn't want to. I've it, been so. calling it, it was Mother Nature's sound machine overnight for people. Maybe and, you that's know, why I slept so good. Perhaps, <laughs> that could be it. But there were a few rumbles of thunder too that woke a few folks up. And I'm happy to say though, all that rain has been pushing east of us. And we got about half an inch to an inch of rainfall. Just about everyone around South Central Texas. So some good news there for us. And finally, this weekend is the weekend. We are finally going to be seeing the sun. OK, it has been some seven to ten days without substantial sunshine around San Antonio. As we look at the weather setup right now, you can see there are a couple of isolated showers lingering, but this is quickly pushing off to the east and we're already starting to see some clearing out to the west. Temperatures this morning on the chilly side. It's 50 degrees in San Antonio. It's 44 in Kerrville, 48 in Hondo, 37 in Rock Springs. 51 in New Braunfels and 53 in Gonzales. Now today you are going to want a light jacket because we'll get up to about 61 degrees. But here's the thing. Find something to block out the wind. It is going to be very windy today. We're talking sustained winds from the west 15 to 20 miles per hour gusting up to 30 miles per hour. But tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day. The winds will die down. We'll start off chilly in the 40s and top off in the 70s with plenty of sun Sunshine. A gorgeous weekend after what's been a pretty drab and dreary week for us, and at least we got a little bit of rain out of it. And coming up in the forecast, I'll have a look at your Texas traveling forecast across the state of Texas. A lot of people going to be hitting the roads heading home from the Thanksgiving holiday. And of course, we'll talk about those winds and what you can expect in the week ahead. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. Two adults are facing questions from the San Antonio police after they were found with a six-year-old who police say was malnourished. The discovery was made after police were called to a welfare check at a home on Timberhurst that's not far from Leon Valley on the city's northwest side. That's when police say they found the child, the father, and a 21-year-old woman. EMS was called to take the child to the hospital. Right now, it's unclear what charges, if any, they will be facing. And a homeowner is grateful this morning after firefighters were able to stop the flames in his garage from spreading to the rest of the house on Glamis Avenue, on Glamis Avenue, located on the southeast side. The homeowner says it wasn't until the lights in his home started to flicker that he went out, investigated, and found the blaze in the garage. By the time fire crews arrived, the garage was fully engulfed. It was deemed a total loss, unfortunately, along with the items inside, including a car the homeowner was restoring. Electrical issues are being blamed for that fire. Topping your morning headlines, we're learning more information about the gunman and the deadly Virginia Walmart shooting. Authorities say the shooter wrote a, quote, death note before entering the store, killing six co-workers and himself. They also say he didn't have a criminal history and legally bought the gun he used in the attack just hours before the shooting. The city of Chesapeake is planning a memorial for all the victims Monday night. And the Coast Guard is calling a Friday rescue a Thanksgiving miracle. A 28-year-old man spent up to 15 hours in the Gulf of Mexico. That's after he fell off a Carnival cruise ship. Carnival says he was reported missing Thursday around noon. The crew aboard a cargo ship found him about 20 miles south of Southwest Pass, Louisiana, where rescue teams were able to get him out of the water by helicopter. He's in the hospital in stable condition. Over in Colorado, one of the two people who helped take down the accused Club Q shooter in Colorado Springs reopened his local brewery Friday for the first time since the attack. And people showed up in droves to support the man who many call a hero. Richard Fierro is credited with saving lives in the shooting, which killed five people. And people traveled all across the state with lines out the door waiting to grab a beer from his family business. He says he's humbled beyond belief, seeing support from the community 
and the state. And you know, with stories like that, that's the, the good that comes out of it, right? right? To see the community support and people stepping up. We saw that and we continue to see that in Uvalde. So beautiful to see that in other states. Time right now, 605, 49 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, Chick-fil-A and Popeyes, they're not the only places with a good chicken sandwich. David Elder says he's got a go-to spot for all your fried deliciousness today on Texas Eats. And despite the rain, the high school football playoffs continued with Alamo Heights taking on Liberty Hill in a huge rematch. We'll look at how they did along with other teams from the Alamo City. 49 degrees at 6.05. Sarah Spivey says that rain, it's starting to peter out and it's going to turn out to be a sunny day. He'll, she'll have our full forecast when we come back. Welcome back. This morning, we're right in the middle of high school football playoffs. And after they ended steel season on a last second field goal last week, Lake Travis High School in Austin took on another San Antonio powerhouse in the Brennan Bears last night in New Braunfels. The Bears scored the first touchdown of the game before taking a 13 to 10 lead at halftime. It took a back and forth second half, but the Bears slowly pulled away in the fourth quarter and they get a huge win over the Cavs, 34 to 17. Over in Bastrop, Alamo Heights took on Liberty Hill in a huge rematch this time in the Class 5A Division II third round. Heights took the lead with 32-31 with three minutes to play, but the Panthers answered on the next drive to go up 37-32. Alamo Heights had one last chance to win the game, but couldn't connect on a Hail Mary pass. The Mule season ends 37-32. Liberty Hill moves on to the next round. There's one play somewhere that you can point a finger at, but that's not the reality. It's it's the whole game. We had opportunities in the first half to score that we didn't uh, when our defense was playing lights out. And, and so uh, it's a total team effort uh, when you win. It's a total team effort when you come up short, but I know this one stings. So Alamo Heights falls to Liberty Hill for the second year in a row, 32-37. to Brennan, of course, moves on with their big win over Lake Travis. Some other scores. Bernie took out Port Lavaca Calhoun 51 to 0. So the Greyhounds are 13 and 0 for the first time in school history. Meanwhile, Smithson Valley took on Full Shear and the Rangers are moving on after a 31 to 13 win. The Texas Longhorns have wrapped up their regular season after hosting the Baylor Bears for some Friday college football. And it was a close game all the way to the very end. In the fourth quarter, Baylor went up by three, 27 to 24. So Texas turned to their ground game to close things out. Star running back, Bajon Robinson helped the Horns run over 200 yards on the day and scored two touchdowns. Texas ran on 22 straight plays after Baylor took the lead and they went on to win 38 to 27. His big day, Robinson moves into fourth place all time in career rushing yards at UT. How did we want to play our final 30 minutes, right? That's literally what I was what I was saying to him was, hey, we got 30 minutes. How, how's this going to go? To use a boxing analogy, we were up against the ropes. But in the end, you know, what we said all along, man, I wanted our seniors to have a special memory their last time at DKR. Hopefully they're going to look back on this one and, and be proud that uh, they were they were part of this football team this year. What a memory. Texas still has a chance at making the conference title game. If Kansas can beat number 15 ranked Kansas State later today, Texas will face number four ranked TCU for the Big 12 championship. And my Aggies are going to take <laughs> on LSU Ooh. today. Ooh. Hey, all I got to say is gig them, right? Gig them. Hey, good, good luck. Thank you. Hey, you know, <laughs> last night was mostly just some good rain for us, but there was a little bit of smaller hail, especially out near New Braunfels. This is a look on our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. Picture sent in here from uh, Penny. Thank you so much, Penny, for sending in this picture. You can see that that's quite a bit of hail out there. Just some looks like uh, P to dime sized hail from last night close to about 11 p.m. As it stands right now, though, things are fairly quiet around San Antonio. We've seen most of the rain push on off to the east, but there are a few areas where we've got some showers lingering in uh, around San Antonio. So let's go ahead and zoom in right along 35 there. Shirts Selma area closer to Santa Clara and Marion in uh, parts of uh, Guadalupe County. We've got a shower there moving through just east of Seguin, a shower moving through and near Canyon Lake, some showers as well near Fisher too, but that's about it for our viewing area right now. And as far as rainfall goes, I mean, we saw a good amount of rain 
around San Antonio just in the last 12 hours to 24 hours. Let's take a look at some of this 24 hour rainfall total. Anywhere you see these greens, that's where maybe perhaps up to about an inch of rain has fallen. About half an inch of rain fell near the airport. Now coming up in the next half hour, we're going to take a more in depth look at that rainfall uh, in certain neighborhoods. But generally, again, here's the weather setup. Most of this has moved off to the east. We're still seeing some heavy rain out toward Houston uh, and across parts of Waco as well. And as we take a look across the state of Texas, heavy rain up near Dallas, Fort Worth too, even some snow near Midland, Odessa. This is a very dynamic low pressure system. You can see just how prominent it is out there. All of this rain making that big counterclockwise motion around that low. Now behind this low, we've got a lot of very dry air moving in as well. It's a big travel weekend across the state of Texas. So as we look at your travel cast across the state of Texas through the morning, rain up in North Texas and in East Texas, even some snow, Fort Stockton, Midland area. But by about lunch, we're really going to see most of the rain end for the state of Texas. And here in San Antonio, we'll be seeing clearing skies here just within the next couple of hours. And it's going to be a pretty sunny day here. The first time we've seen sun, abundant sunshine in a while, at least a week, week and a half around San Antonio. However, those roads are still pretty damp out there right now. So if you have some early Saturday morning errands to run, you may have to turn on your windshield wipers from the road spray. It's 50 degrees outside right now. Winds are from the west northwest at about 10 miles per hour, but those winds are going to pick up and take a look at temperatures around the uh, south central Texas, the KSAT 12 viewing area 45 in Yavaldi this morning. Good morning in Kerrville where it's 44 degrees, 51 in New Braunfels, 53 in Gonzales and 48 in Catula. Another way to see how the dry air is moving in is by looking at the dew points. Dew points here in San Antonio are in the 40s, but out to the west toward Del Rio, Yavaldi, dew points are in the 30s. Chapstick weather, very dry weather. All of that's going to be moving in with a west wind. And today the winds could gust up to 30 to 35 miles per hour, especially in the afternoon. So if you want to avoid your Christmas decorations being taken away by the wind, you may want to wait until tomorrow to set up those outdoor Christmas decorations with those gusty winds. As we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, it's cloudy right now, but even by 10, we're going to be looking at clearing skies. Temperatures will be in the upper 50s for most of the day today. West winds picking up in the afternoon sustained at 20 miles per hour at times. Mostly sunny and 61 for the high. It'll get chilly this evening. Elsewhere, it'll be 50 59 in Bernie, 57 in Kerrville, 62 in Canyon Lake, 64 in Floresville, and in Pleasanton, 62 in Seguin. The average high today is 69, so cooler than average. Again, tomorrow, a great day for setting up those outdoor Christmas decorations around San Antonio. We're going to be up to 72 degrees for the high temperature. Warming up a little bit through Tuesday, another cold front arrives Wednesday, although this one looks to be dry, and we will see a pretty prominent temperature drop from the 70s into the 50s. But a dry cold front, we still have yet to see our first freeze in San Antonio. Average first freeze in San Antonio is November 30th, so it looks like we'll be at least a little bit later than average. Guys, guess what, too? Great day to walk the dog if you can see in the wind for the first time. <laughs> I can do yeah. sure. So I'll be, I'll be uh, showing Fido's forecast and pictures of your pups coming up in the next half hour. Too. I know people are probably going to be eager if they haven't put out their outdoor Christmas decorations today because yeah. the sun, but... The wind, you know. The wind would be a little frosty's like blowing yeah. out there. In the wind, in the wind, pretty crazy. <laughs> I was so, happy tomorrow. to see uh, going back. Well, real quick from yesterday. Yeah. I mean, the tree lighting went went on, and awesome. that was really great to see because I know that people were on edge that it was going to be canceled as well as the holiday parade, but it went on. The rain stayed yeah. off it until the overnight hours. Out for us, it really did. All right, thank you, Sarah. It's six seventeen and forty nine degrees. So to come on GMSA, director James Cameron says his Avatar sequel has a lot of money. Just to break even, we'll tell you how much in your morning spotlight. Plus, David Elder giving us a sneak peek of this fried chicken sandwich. He'll tell us where you can find it on this week's Texas Eats. <laughs> My favorite time of the day, Lotto. <laughs> pick three. The numbers are two, six, one, Fireball five. Your daily four, three, five, four, zero, Fireball eight. Cash five, five, eight, 18, 20, 33. Take a look at these Mega Millions, 29, 31, 46, 54, 67, Mega Ball 18, Mega Plier 2. Good luck.
Talk to me about this sandwich. How is it prepared? It is a hand-breaded Nashville-style chicken thigh on slaw and pickles on a butterflake bun. And this is huge. This isn't like your standard size. People ask for a second bun just so they can finish it. That's a chicken sandwich. Cheers to you. We gotta cheers this. Yeah. There you go. That's the bite. Oh my gosh, that chicken sandwich. It's just evil to, you know? <laughs> In the best way, it's in the like best way. Evil in the best way. It's like, oh, we're like starving over here. And here's yeah, a, a as all Texas eats, yes. so I was like, oh, time to get hungry. Time right now, 621, 49 degrees. Up next, J-Lo has a big announcement for fans, and it's not about her personal life. We'll check it out in your morning spotlight. Welcome back in your morning spotlight. J-Lo, Jennifer Lopez, she's returning to music with a new album that has a link to one of her classics. Which one could it be? I don't know. It's called This Is Me Now. And according to a press release, it focuses on the journey the singer has made over the past 20 years. The announcement comes on the 20th anniversary of Lopez's 2002 record, This Is Me Then. Okay, so she did there. there. We go. <laughs> it featured the big hit, Jenny from the Block, and a song from her then fiance, Ben Affleck, called Dear Ben. Affleck and Lopez later broke up, but since returned to each other and are now married, the new album reflects that with a new song called Dear Ben, part two. Oh, okay. And some movie news. Director James Cameron says his Avatar sequel has to earn $2 billion just to break even. Avatar, The Way of Water, comes out December 16th. Cameron also directed the original 2009 Avatar and told GQ magazine the much-anticipated sequel was incredibly expensive. He says hitting $2 billion would make his movie the third or fourth highest grossing film in history. It's a pretty high bar, but remember the first Avatar that raked in more than $2.7 billion, which is why he probably got a big bite. But that was a different time. That's when yeah. people were going when, to the movies. Yeah. The movies were making a lot of money. And people were making money. People weren't staying at yeah. home to watch the movies. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I am excited for this though. Oh, so you, you're an Avatar fan. I. I've I, never even watched the first. Oh, it's so good. It's yeah. a beautiful film. Okay. Like, it's visually just beautiful. Maybe I'll help him okay. meet his goal. <laughs> it's 626 and 49 degrees. So to come at 630, the U.S. and England tied Friday at the World Cup. So America needs another win to move on to the knockout rounds. We'll look at who's next for Team USA. Plus, a new indoor farm is putting down some roots on the city's southeast side. We'll look at how it works and who they're looking to hire in the Alamo City. It's Saturday, 6.30, November 26th. I said that all out of order, but... It's sorry. okay. <laughs> Happy Saturday. Thank you so much for waking up with us on this kind of... is The rain's, the rain's done, right, Sarah? Yeah, but it's, it's still like damp little, out there. Yeah, yeah we've, we had a lot of rain in the overnight hours, so there's definitely some road spray out there right now, but the rain has pushed off to the east. There are a couple of areas of showers in Guadalupe County right now. Right along uh, the highway there, I-10 toward Luling, we've got some of that light rain as well. But generally, all the rain is done, and we saw a good amount, about half an inch to an inch of rain. Coming up, I'm going to show you neighborhood look at rainfall totals. But right now, it's chilly this morning. It's 50 degrees in San Antonio. Good morning, Rio Medina. It's 46, 45 in Bernie, 47 in Lotus, 50 in Seguin, 44 in Yavaldi, and 44 in Kerrville. I promised your Fido's forecast. This is Brewer the Bassett. Oh my goodness, bundled oh, up in his little dinosaur outfit oh. there. I love it so much. If you want to send in pictures of your pups to our Fido's forecast, just scan that QR code. It'll take you to our KSAC Connect feature where you can add a picture of your pup like Brewer there. Now, uh, for today, the dogs and us, we're going to enjoy some sunshine for the first time in a long time here in San Antonio. It's finally going to be sunny this weekend. We'll, see, we'll be seeing clearing skies here shortly. Cool today with a high temperature of 61, but windy, windy with gusts up to about 30 miles per hour from the west. So that's going to be the big story today. The quickly clearing skies and the windy conditions tomorrow. Very pleasant. We're talking highs in the 70s and those winds are going to die down too. And next week our sunshine will continue, but we do have another cold front in the forecast. I'll have those details for you coming up in just a bit. Sarah Alicia. Thank you, Sarah. 
A fight inside Ingram Park Mall led to a shooting in the parking lot Friday night. San Antonio police say there's no threat to the public and it was an isolated shooting. Officers were called to the scene of that shooting around 6 p.m. on the west side of the mall. Two groups got into a fight inside but went outside the mall through the JCPenney exit. When police arrived, they found a young woman shot in the arm. She was taken to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. Police locked down the one door at JCPenney while they assessed the scene and questioned the suspect and witnesses. Detectives plan to use security footage for their investigation. And a woman is in police custody accused of stabbing her 17-year-old nephew, that teen now in serious condition. The stabbing happened around 9 last night at a home on Fortuna Street near Old Highway 90 West. San Antonio police say it's unclear what led up to the stabbing, but say the aunt allegedly pulled a knife. When officers arrived, the teen had possible life-threatening injuries. He was taken to the hospital. New this morning, three days after that mass shooting at a Walmart in Virginia, the Chesapeake City Council is expected to issue an emergency declaration in response to the tragedy. This comes as investigators reveal new information in the case. ABC's Christine Sloan has a story from New York. Detectives this morning are searching for a motive in the deadly shooting at a Walmart in Chesapeake, Virginia. Police say Andrew Bing, a supervisor at the store, opened fire on his co-workers using a 9 millimeter handgun. He purchased the gun legally just hours before the killings. Survivors reliving the horrifying moments. Even when I sleep, like it still plays bits and pieces. So I can't run away from it. Like. I had to sit there on the floor and in front of me watch my coworker have her last moment. Six employees died. Lorenzo Gamble, Brian Pendleton, Kelly Pyle, Randall Blevins, Tanika Johnson, and a 16-year-old now identified as Fernando Chavez Barone, a friend saying he had recently received his first paycheck, buying his mother a set of AirPods. Out of words and speechless that it was him. Fernando is my friend, best friend, everything. He was uh, intelligent, handsome, took all the girls. Um, he took honors. Investigators say they found a death note on Bing's phone where he accused colleagues of making fun of him and comparing him to Jeffrey Dahmer. Bing also wrote that he was led by Satan and asked for forgiveness. The 31-year-old died at the scene of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. LeBron James and the Lakers, they're in town this weekend for a two-game series against the Spurs of Silver and Black. We're hoping to snap their six-game losing streak last night. The Spurs trailed for most of the game, but got the, lead, the, got the Lakers lead down to four points heading into the fourth. But LeBron and Anthony Davis got going and the Spurs couldn't keep up. They ended up on the losing end of this one, 105 to 94. So the Spurs next game tonight at the AT&T Center for a rematch with the purple and gold tip off with the Lakers is set for 7 p.m. All right, come on, Spurs. Let's let's get this one done. And looking ahead in your soccer news, well, Mexico and Argentina play today, but also Team USA needs to win their final group match against Iran on Tuesday to advance to the knockout stages at the World Cup. The U.S. tied England 0-0 in their highly anticipated matchup in the group stage yesterday, and since they also tied Wales in their first game, they'll need a win to move on. ESPN quoted U.S. midfielder Christian Pulisic saying he hoped his side's performance in the draw with England made a lot of people proud back in the U.S., but also acknowledged that he and his teammates have, quote, got a lot of work left to do. Also looking ahead, the UTSA Roadrunners can wrap up an undefeated regular season in Conference USA with the victory over UTEP this afternoon in the Dome. It would be the first time they've gone undefeated in conference play. Today is senior day, where as many as 21 players will be honored with ceremonies. Before kickoff, it's also Fan Appreciation Day, where Roadrunner fans will be allowed on the field. That's really cool to meet the team. Kickoff set for 2.30 p.m. And before we go to a quick break, a quick reminder, KSAC Community is in the middle of its Share the Shoes campaign. You can donate a new pair of shoes or socks to a child in need. This drive is in partnership with the San Antonio Police and Zapatos.
There are six San Antonio police substations taking those donations right now through December 16th. You can find more information on our KSAT community page on KSAT.com. Time right now, 637, 49 degrees. Still ahead as we count down to Christmas, Santa isn't the only one with a strong beard game. <laughs> We've got some big updates for donations in our No Shave November campaign. And who's charging up the leaderboard for Team KSAT? And after the break, a new indoor farm is putting down roots on the city's southeast side. What this means for the community's economy. We had some nice rain overnight to help you sleep like a baby. <laughs> and Sarah Spivey says we're finally going to see the sun today. That's very exciting. We're going to also have a little bit of wind in that forecast. She'll let us know all about that when we come back. Welcome back. Looking ahead, a multi-million dollar indoor organic farm will soon sprout up in San Antonio. I'm sure you're pretty excited I'm about excited that I'm excited about this. It's the latest addition to the ever-growing Brooks community near I-37 and Loop 410. As RJ Marquez reports, this means more jobs and healthier living for people on the city's southeast side. This open field on the southeast side will soon be home to what's being called the future of farming in San Antonio. Soli Organic is building a $50 million indoor farm and packing facility at Brooks. Soli Organic is really has launched an initiative throughout the country where they're really investing and in building their plants in designated opportunity zones. That designation helps connect major employers to areas with lower incomes. The more employers we bring in that have not only the higher end jobs and the higher paying jobs, but jobs that pay a salary that takes them out of poverty and gives them a good health care package. The farm is also expected to bring in about 100 jobs to the area and produce about 5 million pounds of produce every year. A lot of people from the skilled trades, skilled maintenance technicians and such will be filling those kinds of positions. This indoor farm will be built on 140,000 square feet of property right here at Brooks and it will produce everything from herbs, mints, cilantro and basil, all of it that will be shipped to local and national retailers. It will also be the company's first high-tech indoor farm in Texas. I'm excited that Soli Organic saw the assets that make up Brooks, uh, that we're making and building a true community that is in the process of developing not only for its own immediate needs, but for the surrounding region. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Love to see it. Absolutely. Hey guys, uh, did the rain wake you up at all last night? It did. Yeah. I woke up around 2.30 and I was like, oh. It's thundering outside. You know, I slept like a baby, so well, I credited. Thank you, Rain. That's good. You're either one or the other, right? You sleep through the rain or you wake up. And we did have quite a bit of rain last night. We'll show you those rainfall totals in a bit. You can see outside right now that 410 is a little damp in spots, so some road spray out there if you're heading out early this morning. But the rain is over. It's cloudy and 50 degrees at the airport, but skies are clearing. Winds are picking up, too, from the west-northwest at 10 miles per hour. Here's a look at the radar right now. Again, all that rain has pushed off to the east. We've really only got a few showers moving out from uh, Guadalupe into Gonzales County and down in DeWitt County as well. Otherwise, we saw quite a bit of rain. Here's a look at some showers and storms, the rainfall totals in your neighborhoods. Go ahead and pause the screen if you need to. We're going to show zoomed in version here in just a second on uh, Bear County, but more than an inch in Floresville, half an inch in Brackettville, an inch in Rock Springs, uh, almost an inch in Hunt up in Kirk County, half an inch in Bernie. Hallisville picked up nearly an inch of rain and the airport picked up officially a little bit more than half an inch of rainfall. The rim area, nine tenths, uh, again, see Scenic Oaks, more than half an inch of rain. Seguin, about an inch of rain. And New Braunfels really got a good amount of rain, more than an inch and three quarters of rainfall out in New Braunfels. So some good healthy rain that also fell along the uh, Edwards Aquifer Recharge Zone. Here's a look at the setup across the state of Texas. There's actually a flood watch that's going to continue out toward Houston. That's where most of this rain is headed as we speak right now. So if you're planning on traveling early this morning along I-10 out toward Houston, you may have to watch out for some ponding on the roads. But otherwise, that winter weather advisory in parts of West Texas is about to expire. Again, this is a pretty dynamic low pressure system. You can see very clearly the counterclockwise swirl in the atmosphere. A lot of heavy rain up 35 toward Dallas too early this morning if you're traveling up toward Dallas. Again, by, by about noon, we're going to see most of this rain end, so we really won't have to worry about it for too long. And what I'm showing you here is the water vapor imagery. It shows the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. Anywhere you see these gold and red colors, that's where we've got very, very dry air 
air and that low pressure system is pulling in that very dry air. This is why today we're quickly going to be seeing the sunshine. It's cloudy out there right now, but even in the next couple of hours, we're going to be seeing quickly clearing skies. Temperatures are not going to warm up too much today. We'll be in the 50s for most of the day, but mostly sunny in the afternoon and high temperature right around 61 degrees in San Antonio. So it is going to be a cool but sunny day. Finally seeing some sun for the first time in honestly seven to 10 days seeing some sunshine. A nice welcome change. One thing to keep in mind though today is it is going to be very windy. We're talking wind gusts of up to about 30 to 35 miles per hour during the day today. This is a snapshot at around 10 o'clock this morning. Again, winds up to about 20 miles per hour, gusts up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. And then this afternoon, take a look at those uh, wind gusts about 35 miles per hour in parts of the hill country. So a very windy day, but we will be seeing those winds uh, calm by the evening hours after sunset. So if you have evening plans with a calming wind, you're going to want to bring that jacket with you because it's going to get chilly very quickly. Again, here's a look at high temperatures across uh, South Central Texas, 66 in Del Rio, 57 in Kerrville, 62 in Canyon Lake, 64 in Gonzales, 64 in Pleasanton. As we zoom in a little bit closer, it'll be 64 in Floresville, 62 in Canyon Lake, 59 in Bernie, 62 in Hondo. The average high temperature this time of year is 69. So we are going to continue to have cooler than average temperatures. If you're planning on decorating outdoors for Christmas, uh, you know, honestly, tomorrow's going to be a great day to do that because we're going to have calmer wind conditions outside. It'll be chilly in the morning at 44 degrees early tomorrow morning, but by the afternoon, really pleasant and 72. So if you need to nudge your husband to put up the Christmas lights tomorrow. It's a great day to do that. Today it will be a little bit windy out there. Again, gusts up to about 30 miles per hour. As we look at the forecast over the next few days, a gradual warm up through Tuesday will be at 76 by Tuesday, so a little bit warmer than average for the first part of this week. Then we see another front move through on Wednesday. I don't anticipate a lot of rain this week, so it looks like we got a good amount of rain last night. That should be our rain for the week. Uh, with that front moving through on Wednesday, it could be an upside down day where we have our warmest temperatures in the morning, but during the day those temperatures fall because of that front, uh, and then we'll end the week with with cooler than average temperatures, cold mornings, and chilly afternoons. I like that upside down day. It's an upside down day. We live on in the upside Wednesday. down. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> that would be scary. That would be a little and terrifying. By the way, that's a Stranger Things reference. And it's those. a little scary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's 648, 49 degrees. Still ahead, Thanksgiving is over, but the facial hair is it coming is. in strong for the guy. Not for us. <laughs> All right, we, we have some big updates for the donations in our No Shave November campaign and who's charging up the leaderboard for Team KSAT. Let's take a look outside with the roads and trans guide. So I know I had some, I experienced some, you know, light drops on the windshield this morning and definitely wet roads out there. So if you're traveling, coming, you know, leaving San Antonio or heading back home. Stay safe. If any incidents pop up, we'll let you know about them. All right, your lotto. Good luck. Pick three, two, six, one, fireball five. Your daily four, the numbers are three, five, four, zero, fireball eight. Cash five, five, eight, 18, 20, 33, mega millions, 29, 31, 46, 54, 67, mega ball, 18, mega plier two. Good luck. All right, Thanksgiving might be over, but all the guys at KSAT are still growing out their beards for a good cause. That's right, No Shave November, still going strong. Okay, let do we have the leader? Oh, no, oh, RJ. We're gonna hear from RJ. On why he's participating. Hey everybody, it's RJ and I'm taking part in No Shave November for the third straight year along with my KSAT co-workers as we try to raise money and funds for cancer awareness and treatment. I'm personally doing this for the Wisdom family. Uh, Bryce Wisdom's story, of course, galvanized the entire city of San Antonio a few years back and he um, unfortunately lost his courageous battle with kidney cancer. And I'm also doing this for my personal family. Uh, my uncle Hedda passed away from cancer a few years ago and that is still something that affects my family very deeply too this day. So please go ahead and donate either to my page or to any one of my coworkers' pages. Uh, any little bit of donation is very much appreciated as we continue to try and fight this horrible disease. Have a good one, everybody.
Okay, here's a look at our leaderboard. Okay, so Mike and Justin and Max. Max is a new one. He moved up yesterday. Um, they have a lot wow. of money right now. Um, 16. Okay, wait. Max, I think, had 12 or 13. Yeah, I was going to say, Max at some point this week jumped up to second place. And I mean, look at him go. Third place. All right, Max. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. For Max Massey, I'm gonna put in a plug. another yes, one. Yes, yes, another he one. He is feeling under the weather today. Yes. So let's go ahead it, and maybe it'll donate. Make him feel better. It'll encourage <laughs> right. Him. So so Max never calls in sick. So, ever. Ever. So our viewers make him feel better by donating <laughs> on his name. Uh, for there's a good cause. There's the QR code on your screen for No Shave November. You just put, take out your camera and scan that and it will take you right to our KSAT team no shave and then you can pick who you want to donate in honor of. Of course, this is all for a good cause for to raise funds for cancer awareness and research. Um, I do want to say that people in the last place, we have 15 of the gentlemen here at KSAT participating. Garrett Berncher is in last place with oh, 275. No. <laughs> we heard from RJ, we'll give him a plug here. He has $755, he's in eighth place. Steve Spreester, let's help him Come out. On. He's in 11th place with $425. Steve. All right, they need a lot of help, but there's still some days left here in the month I, of November. I think um, so Mike and I kind of made a little mistake yesterday in order to help Max. Mike, you know, off the cuff when Max wasn't listening, told me that, oh, Max with his beard kind of looks like Captain America. Wow. And I was like, don't tell him that. Gonna, I don't want his head to get big. And then I said it on air because I needed him. And after I said that, you know, Captain with his America? beard. What, Chris Evans, yeah, the guy yeah, who just no, got Sexiest Man Alive. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, he got very uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> but his donations, they started to come in, so. All right, Captain America. <laughs> Time right now, 655, 48 degrees. Here's what's coming up at 7 on Good Morning America. Coming up on GMA, retail rush on this busy holiday shopping weekend. The record number expected to hit stores and go online. Plus, on the Small Business Saturday, why small business owners are turning to social media. And more on the hottest deals right now. We're sharing advice on what to buy now and what bargains to wait for. Also coming up, new details overnight in that JetBlue air scare. The passenger charged with assault after allegedly threatening another passenger with a razor blade mid-flight. The TSA and the FBI now investigating and we're hearing from someone who was on the flight and the latest on that remarkable cruise ship rescue caught on camera the man who survived more than 15 hours overboard now safe more on the coast guard rescue response coming up it's all ahead right here on gma all right we are seeing clearing skies right now as the sun is rising it is 49 degrees outside there's still some dampness on the roads if you're heading out this morning but it's not because of the rain it's because of road spray from last night's rain big story today is going to be wind gusts wind gusts of up to 30 to 35 miles per mm. hour but at least we're going to be seeing sun for the first time in a long time out there temperatures are going to be on the cool side we'll be in the 50s for most of the day topping off right around 61 in the afternoon Afternoon. Again, a sustained wind at about 15 miles per hour, gusting up to 30, and it'll get chilly pretty quickly tonight. So take that jacket with you wherever you go. Tomorrow, a cold start at 44, but look at that 72 sunny degrees tomorrow to round out your weekend. And next week doesn't look too bad. We will see a warm up 76 by Tuesday, but a cold front moves through Wednesday that'll knock our high temperatures back down into the 50s. Looks to be a dry cold front without much of a chance for rain in the week ahead. I'm hoping that cold front will last till Sunday because we have the rock and roll marathon next Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope yeah. so. So, I hope so. Fingers crossed. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Sarah, thank you. We'll see you guys back here at 8 a.m. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A man is able to wake up in his home this morning after San Antonio firefighters stopped a fire in his garage from spreading into his entire house. New research is showing young people are at risk of suffering from hearing loss, what experts are saying about preventing this from happening. And taking a live look at CityCam, no clouds, at least not that I can see, that means the sunshine. What's the song? The 
the sunshine song. The sun will come no, out. No, there's another. No, no, Here not comes that one. the sun. No, there you no, go. No. Here comes the sun. <laughs> Here comes the sun. Good morning. It's 8 o'clock this Saturday morning. It's November 26th. It is Small Business Saturday. Who you heard cheering was Sarah Spivey. She's excited because we're finally seeing the sun after what? Five, six days, Sarah? Oh my gosh. It seems like it's been at least a week, if not longer, for us to not see the sun. So it is great to see some sunshine out there right now. Yes, Alicia, there are so many sunshine songs because <laughs> it just makes us happy to see the sun out there. Uh, now, here's a look at the bigger system, though, that moved through overnight, brought us some good rain. It's currently bringing some heavier rain for the Dallas Fort Worth area, even some heavier rain out no near Houston as well in parts of East Texas. If you're planning on hitting the roads to travel across the state of Texas today, know that whatever direction you head, if it's north, if it's south, if it's east, if it's west, by the time you get to your donation, uh, your uh, donation, your location, uh, the rain will be out of here because behind this low pressure system, we've got some very dry air moving into place. That's why we were able to see the skies clear so quickly. It's beautiful and sunny out there right now, and it is chilly though. It's 48 degrees. It feels like 44. We've got a wind from the west at 10 miles per hour. A big factor today though will be those winds. Winds are going to really pick up. If you're waking up this morning in Kerrville, it's 42 degrees, 44 in Uvalde. Good morning in Rock Springs where it's 36, 52 in Gonzalez and 51 in New Braunfels. Again, wind is a big story today for us. Wind sustained at 15 to 20, gusting up to 30 miles per hour. So if you're planning on doing any Christmas decorating today outside, today is going to be pretty windy, but tomorrow is going to be a great day for that. We'll be looking at sunny and pleasant conditions after a chilly start near 44. We'll be warming up to 72 for your sunny Sunday. A nice and welcome change to the weather pattern this weekend for us. Coming up, we're going to take a look at your pictures of the rain last night and even some hail, and we'll also uh, tell you what you can expect for the week ahead. Another cold front will be on the way soon. Alicia. Thank you, Sarah. And two adults are facing questions from San Antonio police after they were found with a six-year-old who police say was malnourished. The discovery was made when police were called to a welfare check at a home on Timberhurst, not far from Timber Trace Street and Grissom Road. That's when police found the child, the father, and a 21-year-old woman. EMS was called to take the child to the hospital, and as of now, it's unclear what charges, if any, the two will face. A homeowner is grateful this morning after firefighters were able to stop flames in his garage from spreading to the rest of his house. It's happening on the southeast side. The homeowner says it wasn't until the lights in his home started to flicker that he investigated and found the flames in his garage. This all happening on Glamis Avenue. By the time fire crews arrived, the garage was fully taken over by those flames. It was deemed a total loss along with the items inside, including a car that the homeowner was restoring a Electrical issues are being blamed for the fire. And small businesses have, of course, had a tough year as inflation, as inflation and paying higher wages have cut into their profits. So business owners are making difficult decisions on whether or not to pass the burden cost onto its customers. But one coffee shop is actually giving all their profits today to their baristas. Camelia Juarez is there now. Camelia, why is the owner doing this? Butter, sugar. Well, Sarah, Alicia, the owner has actually been doing this a couple of years and he says it's to show appreciation. So just to give you all a heads up, I'm at Flocores Coffee Shop. It's near downtown and I'm actually with the owner who's here to tell us why we're doing this today. So why do we do this every year? We do this every year because we appreciate our employees and we want to show how much we care about them. Being small business, it's real hard to be like, hey, here's a big bonus. So for us, hey, you know what, let's do this instead, you know. Uh, the profits we make for the day, we divide amongst our, our employees, you know, and that's kind of what we you know, like their bonus, you know. So for us, you know, they feel appreciated, you know, they feel that they know that they're cared about. And that's real big to us as a small business, you know, retaining our, our employees. And talk to me a little bit about how it's been a hard year. I know inflation has hit everybody. I know competitive wages are, th those things dig into y'all's profits, but still we're doing this today. So tell me about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, being small business, you know, everything is, is difficult, right? Uh, keeping employees, the price of things, you know. And so for us, you know, 
it, it might be a little bit for us to take this hit, but it's good because we're showing them that we care and other uh, businesses are seeing this as well. You know, not that you have to do the same thing we're doing, but maybe if we take them out to, to dinner or maybe we do a little something for them, you know, and that's why it's real important that we, we support small business because when you support small business, they support the community and that's what it's about. Absolutely. I know that I think it's like 67 cents for every dollar uh, that you give to a small business goes right back into the community because that business owner gives it, puts it right back into our community. So stay with us. We're here for the next half hour. We're going to talk with him some more about supporting small businesses for Small Business Saturday. Right back to you, Alicia, Sarah. Thank you, Camelia. New research shows that more than a billion young people around the world are at risk of suffering from hearing loss. But if changes are made now, experts say that hearing loss can actually be prevented. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has more on how to protect your hearing. It's a sense that's crucial to many aspects of your health, but hearing loss is common. It allows us to stay social and involved and connected, and it has been connected to a cognitive decline. According to a new study published in BMJ Global Health, more than a billion young people ages 12 to 34 are at risk of hearing loss worldwide from listening too loudly to things like music and movies. We have one set of ears for a lifetime. Those delicate sensory cells currently can't be regrown, they can't be repaired, and so really the only way that we can prevent hearing loss 100% of the time is to protect ourselves from loud, damaging sound. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention limits safe noise levels at around 85 decibels over 40 hours a week. The study says those listening to MP3 files on a smartphone often choose volumes as high as 105 decibels. Cleveland Clinic audiologist Sarah Sidlowski says to prevent hearing loss from devices, Turn the volume down. A good sign that the device is too loud is if somebody standing next to you can hear what you're listening to. It's too much. If you're around sounds and can't control the volume, like at work or at a concert, Sidlowski says to use well-fitting earplugs. Some can be custom made. There are certain devices that allow um, certain sounds in and block others. And if you can't protect your ears from loud noises, Sidlowski says to walk further away from the source. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Time right now, 807, 47 degrees. Still ahead on Texas Eats, David Elder takes us to the Riverwalk's newest pizza joint where he tries, we gets to try something other than pizza. All right, and Twitter, well, they're launching a new verification system using different colors. What those colors will represent, still ahead. 47 degrees at 808. Love to see that the sun is finally out in San Antonio after several days of kind of just like gloomy, cold, wet weather. But Sarah says, hey, we're going to have some cooler temps, some windy conditions today. She'll have her forecast when we come back. Welcome back. Don't let the sunny skies fool you. <laughs> last it's night, so chilly. it's very cold still, it Sarah. Windy. It's cold, and last night we did have quite a bit of rain. Now, you're either somebody who wakes up with the rain in the overnight hours or it helps you sleep. Uh, I think we're a mix of uh, all three of us there. Uh, but we did have some healthy rain around San Antonio. Now, there was one storm that did end up producing some hail. This is sub-severe hail below the severe limit of quarter size. But this is a look in New Braunfels and Penn backyard and you can see there's a good mixture of pocket change hail there but in general this was just some really good rain here's a look uh, at uh, out in South Bear County from Lance sending in a picture here more than an inch of rainfall there in South Bear County thank you to everyone who sent in their pictures of the rainfall to our KSAC connect feature on our weather app here's another one here this is in Atkins about a mile and a half half south of uh, Kickcaster you can see uh, more than an inch of rainfall there as well. And coming up in the next half hour, we're going to show exact neighborhood rainfall totals here uh, around South Central Texas. But for now, this is a look at the weather setup. Again, the rain came and the rain has gone. It's even starting to push east of Houston now as we speak. But this is a pretty dynamic weather system across the state of Texas. Look out toward Midland Odessa. We're even seeing some snowfall out there. Can you see all the rain here across parts of North Texas? So that's all around this uh, trough of low pressure, very, very characteristic cutoff low here.
here in the upper levels of the atmosphere, providing the lift, allowing for that rain there. But behind this, we're seeing some much drier air filter in. That's why we saw skies clear so quickly this morning and the rain quickly moved to the east. But if you're planning on traveling across the state of Texas or you have loved ones traveling across the state of Texas today, notice that even by 11 o'clock, most of the rain will be out of North Texas and out of East Texas. There will still be some rainfall near the Lubbock area. But if you're planning on driving around across the state of Texas today, for the most part, you should be just fine. It is, however, going to be very windy today. Winds will be from the west, so vehicles traveling along those north-south highways, 35 high-profile vehicles could get uh, pretty sway out there with those west winds. Otherwise, it's going to be a pretty nice day across the state of Texas, although very chilly and pretty windy too. Sunny skies out there at the airport. It is a nice welcome sight to see the sunshine. It's 48 degrees, but with that west wind at 10 miles per hour, it feels like it's 44. Good morning in Uvalde. It's 44 degrees in Uvalde. 47 in Catula, 52 in Gonzales, 51 in New Braunfels, 49 in Austin, 43 in Fredericksburg, and a chilly 36 in Rock Springs. Now, I mentioned we're going to have a west wind today and that drier air is going to be moving in. Take a look at the dew point right now. Dew points around San Antonio in the 40s, but out to the west toward Del Rio, Rock Springs, they're in the 30s. All that drier air is going to be pushing in today. And we could see winds gusting up to about 35 miles per hour in the afternoon. 30, 35 mile per hour wind gust is a real deal wind gust from the west. Now in the evening, those winds will uh, taper down, die down, and uh, it'll be a pretty chilly evening. But for most of the day today, sustained wind at 15 to 20 miles per hour, gusts up to 30 to 35 miles per hour are entirely possible. As we take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, 58 at noon, we'll be looking at 61 for the afternoon high temperature around San Antonio. And tonight temperatures will fall quickly once we see the sunset close to 530 in the low 50s. Elsewhere, it'll be 59 in Bulverde, 62 in New Braunfels, 64 in Divine, 62 in Utopia, 64 in Gonzales, 64 in Uvalde, 62 in Savinal. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. Tomorrow's going to be a great day for putting up those outdoor Christmas decorations. We're not going to have as much wind. We'll be warming up slowly by Tuesday. We'll be at 76 degrees. Another front arriving on Wednesday that'll drop our temperatures down into the 50s. First day for sun in a while. I've got to look at your Fido's forecast coming up. A lot of those dogs are going to enjoy the sunshine today. Do we have more pictures of the dogs? We do. We I have love more that. Pictures. What was he a basset hound? The one yeah. from earlier this morning. He was, he was adorable. He really was. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Okay, so I know we only have a couple days left of November, which mm -hmm. means no shave November is heading towards the finish line, and we have a goal of twenty thousand dollars. I think we're about 70, a little over 70% of the way yep. there. Awesome. We're close. We're getting close um, and they're going strong. Take a listen to why David Sears is participating. Hi, I'm David Sears, and the reason I'm taking part in No Shave November is, number one, my father-in-law passed away several years ago from a very rare blood cancer, so I'm doing it in honor of him. And number two, I'm doing it to remind you to get tested. If you're around my age, you probably remember the band Duran Duran just found out a couple of days ago that one of their ex-bandmates has prostate cancer, stage four. Get tested. Take care of yourself. That's why we're doing this, to remind you and later. Ladies, you can always remind your men, yeah, those colonoscopy thing is nasty, but it's worth it. Get tested, take care of yourself, and let it grow. David, we love David. Okay, so the, I want to update you. I just checked the leaderboard. Um, we, they just need a little bit more than $4,000, so they're 80%. Okay, and that number for Max has actually gone up. Uh, it's, he's at 1700 or so. Yes. Yeah, we just had a donation of about $100, yeah, because earlier, you know, we might have mentioned that Max Massey, this is according to Mike Osterhage. <laughs> Mike says that Max looks like Captain America, a.k.a. Chris Evans with his beard, <laughs> aka sexiest man alive this year. <laughs> but Max isn't here today, so we can talk about him. Yeah, like he's feeling. <laughs> I'm getting so. as nervous as Max Scott. <laughs> we all talked about that. <laughs> all right, so check out this QR code. It'll take you to our No Shave page on KSAT.com. There, you can of course keep learning more about this cause, how to donate. You have four days left to help meet the goal of are twenty thousand. Are we still number one in the country? How do I check that? I'll check it. Okay, because I know you after the after the okay, about it. Sounds good. 
Okay, so about $4,000 away from our goal. Come on, San Antonio. Let's just make it to 4,000 today. Can anyone make an $84 donation? And that way we have 4,000 left to go. Okay. All right, time right now, 818, 48 degrees. Ford Motor Company recalling more than half a million vehicles. So what's the reason behind that? We'll tell you why coming up. Elon Musk, he's already announced changes to Twitter since becoming the new CEO, you've heard about it. And soon a new verification system is headed to the platform. We'll tell you all about it next. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, two, six, one, Fireball five, Daily four, three, five, four, zero, Fireball eight. Cash five, five, eight, 18, 20, 33, Good luck. Mega Millions 29, 31, 46, 54, 67, Mega Ball 18, Mega Plier 2. Twitter's new verification system will launch next week. CEO Elon Musk says the company will manually authenticate all of its verified accounts. So those considered verified under the new system will get one of the three different colored check marks. Companies will be gold gray check marks for government entities and blue check marks for all individuals regardless of celebrity status. So Musk did not mention a potential price for verification or how long it will take to verify all those accounts. And Ford Motor Company has recalled more than half a million SUVs in the U.S. because of a potential fire risk. The fuel injector under the hood could crack and escapes from 2022 through 2023 and Bronco Sports from 2021 through 2023 models. If that happens, fuel could leak over hot parts and that's how the fire would get started. Ford says it's aware of about 20 fires that are likely to be related to this issue. The company is telling owners to bring their cars to dealerships for a software update. Time right now, 823, 48 degrees. Next, a preview of Texas Eats, a look at a new pizza joint that's on the Riverwalk. Sure, so we do a mixture of pork and beef, so you get that fattiness and that richness from the beef. We stuff it with mozzarella inside and throw a bunch of herbs in there, garlic, onions, let it slow cook in the marinara sauce, and then we make our fresh focaccia in house as oh, well. Wow. More mozz on top, let it melt, comes out, we hit it with the ricotta that we make in house, low and slow on the cooking, make sure it's moist. If you get a dry meatball, you're gonna be upset. Right. You gotta have all that juicy, tender flavor on the inside locked in there. And I know that mozzarella cheese is just gonna add that next layer, that little bit of creaminess that you want as well. All right, so let's cut into these bad boys. Mozzarella stuffed, and look at this, you guys, look at that beautiful cheese right in the middle of that as well. Come on, cheese on top, cheese in the middle. Cheers. Cheers. That's the bite. Wow. Mozzarella all the way, yes please. Yes. Oh e my gosh. Extra cheese. I, I asked Sarah, I was like, why did I just get chills? Is it cold in here? Does, does it look that good? <laughs> At least you got the chills <laughs> when they showed the like focaccia. Oh, <laughs> Man, that looks very yummy. And it's it's known to be a, a pizza spot, but. Yeah, they went for the meatballs. Mm -hmm. All right, time right now, 827, 48 degrees. Still, still ahead, a deep water rescue being called a Thanksgiving miracle. What the U.S. Coast Guard is saying about it. And rainbow trout is making its way back into the waters. We'll tell you about plans by the Texas Parks and Wildlife to restock Texas lakes and streams with this tasty fish. Happy Saturday morning. It's 8.30 and holidays is just in full swing now. It's official now, right? We had the Gracious lighting of the up. tree mm -hmm. last night, the parade. Mm -hmm. And I think the weather for the most part, Sarah, that rain that we were all anticipating, it kind of held off until after those events last night. It absolutely did. You know, uh, nature's sound machine. A lot of people woken up by some sound of rain in the overnight hours. We did have a little bit of thunder, but all in all, this was just good, healthy rain for us around South Central Texas. What it's left us with, though, is a cold and sunny start to the day. Let's take a look at temperatures out there right now and to look at the satellite. You can see all those clouds have swept out of here. 
We've got a sunny start to the day. It's 48 degrees in San Antonio at the airport, 45 in Bernie, 42 in Bandera, 42 in Kerrville, 49 in Divine, 50 at Stinson and Good Morning in New Braunfels. You got a lot of rain yesterday and it's 51 degrees. All right, Fido's forecast. This is Boots and Penny, a pair of Pomeranians excited to go for their walk today. I love how Penny's got the little purple ears there. Uh, but again, yeah, if you're planning on taking your dog for a walk today, it looks great out there. Just a little windy and cool. Temperatures are going to be in the 50s for most of the day. We'll be at 61 degrees for the high and windy conditions with gusts up to about 30 miles per hour. If you want to add a picture of your pup to Fido's forecast, go ahead and scan that QR code. It'll take you right to our KSAT Connect feature. So again, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about how it'll be pretty windy today. Tomorrow, though, very pleasant and comfortable, too, with temperatures reaching into the 70s. And then in the week ahead, our sunshine will continue, but we do have another cold front to talk about. I'll have a look at this and neighborhood rainfall totals from last night coming up in just a bit. Alicia. Thank you, Sarah. One woman is expected to be okay after a shooting outside of Ingram Park Mall. Last night, officers were called to the scene of a shooting around 6 p.m. on the west side of the mall. Police say two groups got into a fight inside the mall, but eventually took things outside through the JCPenney exit. When San Antonio police arrived, they found a young, mo a young woman shot in the arm. She was taken to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. Police locked down one door at the JCPenney while they assessed and why they assess the scene and question the suspect and witnesses. A woman is in police custody this morning after being accused of stabbing her 17 year old nephew, that teen now in serious condition. The stabbing happened around last happened last night at a home on Fortuna Street that's near old Highway 90 West and Northwest 36th Street. San Antonio police say it's unclear what led up to the stabbing, but say the aunt allegedly pulled a knife. But when they arrived, the teen had possibly life threatening injuries. He was taken to the hospital. And a cruise ship passenger who fell overboard is now recovering on dry land. This after the U.S. Coast Guard says he fell into the Gulf of Mexico sometime Wednesday night, only to be found alive almost 20 hours later. Yes, yeah, Courtney Friedman explains some are calling this rescue a Thanksgiving miracle. I'll be honest with you, you know, 17 year career. This case is uh, unlike anything I've been a part of. New video shows the moment the U.S. Coast Guard spotted a missing cruise ship passenger hours after he disappeared. The 28 year old was last seen late Wednesday night on the Carnival Valor. The Coast Guard was called in the next day. We did have a big time delay. The longer that uh, somebody's in the water, the greater the, the search area is going to be, so time was certainly of the essence. Passengers say the ship turned around to help with the search. A cargo ship finally spotted the man Thursday night just off the coast of Louisiana. I think it kind of blows the norm, uh, the normalcy out of the water here uh, and really just shows the will to live is, is something that you need to account for in every search and rescue case. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Wow, to be to know that he made it out alive 15 hours. That's like a movie. Absolutely. Right. A good ending for him. Yeah, and that passenger was in stable condition when he was taken back to New Orleans. That last check, he is still in the hospital. The Car Carnival Valor continued on its destination to Cozumel. Carnival Cruise Line released a statement about the incident saying, quote, we greatly appreciate the efforts of all, most especially the U.S. Coast Guard and the Mariner who spotted the guest in the water, end quote. All right, and if you're a big fan of fishing, now is the time to get your tech box ready. It's because Texas Parks and Wildlife is getting ready to stock thousands of rainbow trout at lakes and streams throughout the state. So the director of the rainbow trout program in Texas says the fish love the cold water and can be caught on a variety of baits and lures. This holiday season, you'll have a good chance at catching some because in total, Texas Parks and Wildlife plans to stock more than 337,000 rainbow trout through March 3rd. Since rainbow trout are unable to survive in Texas after winter, anglers are encouraged to keep up their daily bag limit of five trout. TPWD manages 18 neighborhood fishing lakes statewide in most major urban centers, including here in San Antonio. For more information about getting a fishing license or how to cook up a delicious rainbow trout, check out the Texas Park and Wildlife website.
Okay, it's also Small Business Saturday, and small businesses with fewer than 500 employees consist of nearly 44% of the U.S. economy, and their holiday sales will decide if they can stay afloat within the next year. It's an important time of the year. Camelia Juarez is downtown where one local coffee shop is giving their baristas 100% of today's profits. We hear her there. Camelia, why is it so important to, small, to support small businesses? Well when, you support small, well, when you support small businesses, every dollar that you give goes right back into the community. That owner, they'll, put, they'll take your money and then they'll put it right back into your local stores. And I mean, that's happening exactly here at Flocores Coffee House. They're, every dollar that you spend will go directly to the barista's wallet today. And so also before I talk to the owner and we talk about why we're here, I also wanted to point out that they have some baked goods out here, some pastries, their cakes by Felicia. And I tried one of these, so good. It's, so, what is it, a cinnamon? Churro ch cinnamon churro cupcake. So good, so awesome. So so yummy but I do want to talk about supporting small businesses and why we're having this on today so you've been doing this for a couple of years tell us why today all of the profits are going to the baristas yeah so being a small business it's real hard to like give a bonus you know or show that we care so for us what we decided to do was hey, you know what the, the money we make on this day we'll divide it amongst them and this is what they have right and for us it's just showing that we appreciate their hard work day in and day out you know, and it's our little our little gift for them. For sure. And then, so tell me about, I mean, your interactions with, you know, people who come into the coffee shop. It's not just a Starbucks where, you know, you go in and you get the same thing. Y'all have special menus, you have customers. Tell me about the just being part of the community as a small business. Yeah, so for us, being part of the community, uh, all of our guests that come in, we know who they are. We know what their drinks are. They feel like they're home. Uh, you know, they ask one of our one of our baristas to be part of their wedding. Like it's really is a part of the community. You know, it's not like a Starbucks where we just go come and go and come and go. You know, we actually build those relationships, and that's what small businesses do. You know, they do ingrain themselves, and that's why it's so important to support them. I know that. Do y'all sometimes have events or anything yeah. here? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So we uh, we have like we, we throw markets. We never charge anybody. You know, they come up, pop up. Uh, we also always uh, try to support people that are, trying, that are trying to do good in their neighborhood. And actually, one of our baristas, she's collecting plastic bags and she's going to make uh, mats for the houseless, so they have so they can have that. So that's our next endeavor. What we're doing. That's awesome. Just see, I mean, small businesses, they are part of our community. They live with us. They know they know what we're about. And so for now, I'll, I'll throw it back to you all in the studio. Alicia, Sarah, um, back to you. Thank you, Camelia. The Biden administration is resisting calls from pediatric health groups to declare a national emergency because of the triple demic. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the Children's Hospital Association say cases of the flu, COVID and RSV are overwhelming the health system. Declaration of a national emergency would give providers additional funding as well as more flexibility from regulations. According to the CDC, According to CDC data, the hospitalization rate in all kids for the week of November 12th was twice as high as any other flu season on record. An amazing rescue caught on camera in New York. A man was stuck on the subway tracks and just moments before a train rolled onto the into the station, New York police rescued the man. Just take a look at this video on your screen. Those two officers were doing a platform inspection when commuters on the opposite side flagged them down to say a man had fallen onto the tracks. They had to run upstairs and across the street to get to the other side of the station. They were able to pull that man to safety. That man was hospitalized for minor injuries. An amazing rescue. A lot of rescues today on the show. We like that. Time right now, 840, 48 degrees. If you're planning on cutting your own Christmas tree this year, we'll tell you where you can do so in the San Antonio area. And some exciting moments from last night's Ford Holiday River Parade. We'll hear from those who attended when we come back. There's the Grinch. <laughs> he was the Grand Marshal leading that parade. And the Grinch, I mean, he left us. He had some moody weather last night. And then we wake up, some cheery weather this morning. The sun is out, but it is cold. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Welcome back. We're officially counting down the days until Christmas and people are getting excited for the holiday season. Last night's Ford Holiday River Parade featured 100,000 
1,000 lights and 28 illuminated floats traveling on a four mile route on the San Antonio River. The families at the event say one of the most special moments of the evening was creating memories with their loved ones. We're visiting my brother who's in the military. He's getting ready to get shipped off to Maryland next week. So we're celebrating Thanksgiving with him from Port Natchez, Texas. It's two hours just waving and dancing for people and letting them express a smile. Making core memories there, especially with their loved ones about to be, you know, going into the military. So this year's Grand Marshal, no other than the Christmas Grump himself, the Grinch. But it doesn't look like there was a lot of grumpiness going on there, a lot of cheer. His heart grew, right? That's the thing. The yeah, part. that's exactly right. <laughs> His heart grew once he heard those who sing after he took away all their Christmas. And I'm sure people's hearts are growing knowing that the sun is coming back oh today. Oh my goodness. But let again, I said it earlier, don't let it fool you. It's so cold. It is chilly outside. You're absolutely right, Alicia. But let me tell you, it is nice to see the sun out there, isn't it? It really uh, is wonderful to see sunshine after what was a, a week of straight clouds here in San Antonio. We even got some good widespread rain around South Central Texas last night. However, right now, as Alicia said, it is chilly. It's 48 degrees, but it feels like 44 because we've got a, a stout wind from the west at about 10 miles per hour. Again, just about everybody other than uh, Western Valverde County cashed in on some rain late last night into the overnight hours. Here's a look at some measured rainfall amounts. About uh, almost three quarters of an inch of rain out at Laughlin Air Force Base in Valverde County. Here in San Antonio, we saw half an inch of rainfall, half an inch of rain in Bernie, more than half in Uvalde, three quarters in Hondo, an inch and three quarters in New Braunfels. That is some good news for New Braunfels. They've been missing out on rainfall events recently so that is some good news there almost an inch and a half in Floresville and as we take a closer neighborhood view around San Antonio the downtown area seven tenths Leon Valley seven tenths the rim on the northwest side close to an inch of rainfall Stinson an inch of rainfall Seguin an inch as well and a lot of this did fall on the Edwards aquifer recharge zone and contributing zone so it'll be nice to see if the aquifer actually goes up a little bit now across the state of Texas there are a couple of areas where we're still dealing with the flood watch in East Texas near Houston, but that is going to expire soon. So we really don't need to be worrying about that. If you're planning on traveling east along I-10, that rain is, is out of here. You can see that it's starting to push into deep East Texas. We still have plenty of rainfall across North Texas, closer to the Red River, and even some snow near Midland, Odessa and parts of West Texas. Now, this is a very dynamic low pressure system. Not only did it bring us the rain yesterday, it's bringing a good portion of Texas the rain, but it's also funneling in some very dry air from the southwest. This is a look at the water vapor imagery. It's a cool satellite uh, that we've got up in space here. And anywhere you see these reds and golds, this is where we've got some very dry air. You can just see how this is being pulled in because of this low pressure system. So what does that mean for us? Well, it means a sunny weekend. <laughs> it means a sunny day today, although it is going to be chilly. Uh, we'll be at 58 by noon mostly sunny all day long 61 for the high temperature no more rain for the day and then tonight after the sun sets close to 5 30 we'll be seeing a chilly evening if you have saturday night plans temperatures are going to fall quickly into the low 50s now in addition to the sunny weather i do have to mention it's going to be pretty windy today we're going to be looking at sustained winds about uh, 10 to 20 miles per hour but this is a look at the wind gusts we have wind gusts of 25 to 30 to even 35 miles per hour this afternoon so a very windy day if you're trying to set up up lightweight Christmas decorations outside. Today's not a great day to do that because of those winds, but winds will die down this evening and tomorrow's actually going to be a pretty good day for any kind of Christmas decorating. High temperature 61 in San Antonio. Elsewhere it'll be 66 in Del Rio, 57 in Kerrville. This is quite a bit cooler than our average high of 69 degrees, 62 in Seguin and 62 in New Braunfels. I mentioned tomorrow's going to be a good day for outdoor Christmas decorating. Check it out tomorrow morning. Chilly in the morning though, 44 degrees set that fireplace on early in the morning, but then in the afternoon it'll be 72 sunny degrees outside with calm wind conditions. As we look ahead to the week, a bit of a warm up through Tuesday will be in the 70s for the high temperature and then a potent cold front will move through on Wednesday. Here's the thing though, I don't expect for uh, that front to be bringing much rain on Wednesday, maybe a passing shower, but nothing like what we saw last night. Another thing to keep in mind, no freeze yet. Our first average freeze in San Antonio is November 30th. It'll 
It'll be cold in the mornings by the end of the week, but no freeze just yet. What kind of impact has this recent rain made on our drought situation? Well, it's it's probably put a dent in it. We'll okay. know on Thursday when the drought monitor comes out exactly, but but we're still number two for the driest mm -hmm. year on record. So we're, we could use some more rain. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank it's you, Sarah. 849 and 48 degrees. Next Christmas is near and it's time to send out those holiday photos. We'll tell you where you can get those done now through December. Take a look outside with the roads of Transguide. We know today, tomorrow, some big travel days, especially on the road. You see people driving right there. If you're out and about, please be safe. Be careful. If any incidents pop up, we'll let you know about them. If you thought about cutting your own Christmas tree was possible or it wasn't or was? Well, it okay. was it wasn't it wasn't possible. Impossible. In San well, it's not. There's actually <laughs> there are actually several spots here in San Antonio for Christmas tree farms. Each tree farm has different opening dates. Some of the ones you can check out are Divine Acre Farms, Pipe Creek Christmas Tree Farm and Sailor's Christmas Tree Farm. All the addresses and more information on the farms are on our website right now. Just visit KSAT. Dot com. Santa's coming to town and you can now start your family holiday Christmas pictures. You can get those done. Reservations are encouraged. You can get them done at Bass Pro Shops, Ingram Park Mall, Natural Bridge Caverns and North Star Mall. All locations have varying dates, which you can also see on our website. Do you still participate in those? Do you get your picture with Santa? Um, no, but no? if it, but if it's my dogs then I will go yeah. because I love like the, the one picture I have at work framed is of my dog it's Scooby <laughs> and Santa. We know you love your dog. I know. <laughs> All right. Time right now, 854, 48 degrees. We'll be right back. Well, if you are sending presents for Christmas, you'll want to pay attention to this next story. So the U.S. Postal Service has announced its holiday shipping deadlines. You have a few weeks to get your cards and packages in the mail for delivery in order for them to get there by Christmas Day. So Saturday, December 17th, Saturday, December 17th, that is your deadline for the retail ground service as well as first class packages and mail. That includes your greeting cards and priority mail is due December 19th and the deadline for priority mail express is Thursday, December 22nd. So remember, the later you ship, the more you pay. Christmas is, oh my gosh, one month away from what? today, Alicia. I can't believe mm -hmm. we're already talking about the holiday deadlines. Wow. Where did November go? It flew by. Oh I mean, we're not done with November yet, but. Just yet, four, four more days. Who's counting though, right? <laughs> Time right now, 857, 48 degrees. We'll be right back. Christmas. This morning, the holiday spirit has arrived in the Alamo City. We're tracking a flurry of activity across town as we start Small Business Saturday. And taking a live look outside, sunny skies. You are seeing that right, but it is still a cold day. It's going to be super windy. Good morning. It's 9 o'clock this Saturday, November 26. Happy Saturday. Happy sunny Saturday, Alicia. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Absolutely. Max isn't feeling too well, so stepping in for him today. We appreciate that. Absolutely. Happy to be here. And and Sarah, uh, we saw that Christmas tree light up. Yeah. Uh, the rain kind of held off last night for that tree lining and the river parade, and then we got a good amount of rain overnight. We really did. A good chunk of San Antonio saw some at least half an inch of rainfall. Take a look at some of the rainfall estimates from the radar from last night. Anywhere you see the green is about at least half an inch to an inch inch of rainfall elsewhere a quarter to half an inch was a good bet so a lot of good rain out there all that rain has pushed on off to the east uh, Sarah was bringing this up earlier she was asking me how the rain may have affected the drought or helped us improve the drought well we won't know drought until uh, Thursday when the drought monitor comes out but even still with last night's rain we are still the second driest year to date on record uh, and so uh, again we could take any little bit of rain that we can get but this rain 
rain has moved east and we're not going to see any more of it, at least for the next seven days here in San Antonio. As we look at the weather setup, though, across the state of Texas, North Texas still getting some good rain, East Texas getting some good rain and uh, Lubbock area and the Panhandle getting some rain as well, all from this low pressure system that is bringing in some drier air right now. And that's why we've been able to see the sunshine quickly here in San Antonio. It is chilly, though. It's 50 degrees. Take a look at the wind. Alicia was talking about this. The winds is going to be the big story today. Winds are from the west northwest sustained at 15 miles per hour, but we're already seeing wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour. And later on today, we could see wind gusts of up to 30 to 35 miles per hour. It's going to be a cool day too, 61, but at least we're going to have plenty of sunshine. Tomorrow, though, a really nice day. Honestly, hard to complain about the weather tomorrow. A chilly start, but 72 for the high temperature and we're not going to have quite as much wind tomorrow. So pretty nice there uh, for our forecast. Coming up, we're going to take a look at uh, which days over the next week will be the best for Christmas decorating outside. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And we're officially counting down the days of Christmas and until Christmas and people are getting excited for the holiday. Last night's Ford Holiday River Parade featured 100,000 lights and 28 illuminated floats traveling along a four mile route on the San Antonio River, the families at the event say one of the most special moments of the evening was creating memories with loved ones. We're visiting my brother who's in the military. He's getting ready to get shipped off to Maryland next week. So we're celebrating Thanksgiving with him from Port Natchez, Texas. It's two hours just waving and dancing for people and letting them express a smile. This year's Grand Marshal, none other than the Christmas Grump himself, the Grinch. And if you're still looking for holiday presents, you still have some time. You may want to also support Small Business Saturday, which is today. So according to the American to American Express, 67 cents for every dollar spent in a small business stays in our community. Camelia Wattis is supporting local artists at a holiday market happening this morning downtown. Camelia, so what's happening over at the Tobin Center today? Well, Sarah, Alicia, there's over 66 local artists and vendors here. There's lots of things. You could just take a look behind me. But I have a, um, a person, Frederick, he's, he's in charge of this event, and he's here to tell us about how big. So how many vendors? I mean, what's how big is it this year? I think we have 67 vendors this year. So um, we've doubled from last year. Returning from the pandemic was uh, a slow start, but we're really up and running, and it's going to be great. So what can people expect today? I know that there's a couple uh, live music, there's some food. I mean, what else? Is there something for the kids to do? Well, Chef Armando always does great food at a great price, so we're really excited about that. Hot chocolate, of course. We've got Santa Clarence coming today and Santa Rob, um, so that's on the schedule. Uh, Opera San Antonio will be performing today, doing a little caroling, um, and we'll have something happening all day. Oh, and Santa's reindeer are coming. Santa's reindeer are going to show up here. That is so exciting. Um, is there you, some, you mentioned uh, the carols and mm -hmm. so who, wh who's singing again? Um, Opera San Antonio. So the, we have our resident companies here at the Tobin and they'll be participating and showing up as well, representing what happens inside as well as what happens outside. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much You're for welcome. sharing all of that with us. We'll be here for the next half hour. Again, we're at the Tobin Center where there's dozens of art, local art vendors and plenty of stuff to do throughout the day today. Back to you, Alicia and Sarah. Thank you, Camelia. To a top story we've been tracking in the past few hours, at least 13 people are reported missing in Italy after a landslide on the holiday island of Aishia. It Italian authorities say search and rescue operations are underway. The landslide was caused by heavy rain, and that's according to Italy's civil protection and weather civil protection. Weather conditions were also causing this issue, making rescue operations difficult. Well, a timeless classic you can watch from the comfort of your couch is hitting a big milestone. Aladdin is turning 30 this year. Wow, I'm really feeling it. <laughs> old now. This is the timeless tale of a poor boy on the streets of Agrabah who dreams of falling in love with the princess, finding a friend in a genie who can grant three wishes. Jonathan Freeman played the villainous Jafar and was the only actor who voiced a character and played them on Broadway. And of course, the film is famous for the late Robin Williams' iconic and signature style of comedy in Genie. Third years. I remember going to the movies and watching this with my, my brothers and my wow. cousins. 
I think my sister took me to Disney on Ice and it was Aladdin. Man, that movie is just magical. Love it. Happy 30 years. <laughs> and right now, 906, 49 degrees. Still ahead at 9, Elon Musk is getting ready to roll out Twitter's new verification system next week. Why this one will be a lot more colorful. And some healthy competition up next. We've got some big updates for donations in our No Shave November campaign, including who's close to the top of our leaderboard for Team KSAT. Let's take a look outside with live cam. It's chilly out there, 49 degrees at 9.07, but we're happy and smiling because the sun is finally out in San Antonio. Sarah Spivey says we're going to have some windy conditions today for Christmas decorating outside. She'll have our full forecast when we come back.